everyone, welcome back to the channel. I wanted to do a quick video on the Acura Legend. Um, right now, what you're looking at is a keyless entry system into the Acura Legend. So this was a dealer option um, that you could select and you can install afterwards as a dealer supplied accessory. The little known facts about this module are that this is the same module that's shared across multiple different platforms of cars in, during this generation. For example, this specific module right here is shared with the NSX along with the Legend and I believe even early Vigor years. I could be wrong on that, but regardless. This system right here is a very basic system produced by Kenwood back in um, the early 90s. And you can see here, here's the accurate entry um, information off the back of the module, the part number, as well as the serial number that was previously assigned to it. So I want to talk about the serial number and some of the misnomers associated with the keyless entry system. So for years when you went to the dealership and you said, hey, I need a keyless fob um, for my keyless entry system. So say this got broken or say this got lost, you would have to go to the dealership and what they would do is they would fill out a form and they would request a new key fob from Kenwood directly in California and the key fob was programmed to the serial number on the back side of your keyless entry module. Now why is that important? So the key system, this right here, uses a frequency that operates on 318 megahertz and communicates with that module. Just like any other keyless entry system on the market, it basically transmits a signal to the module and says unlock the doors, lock the doors, or panic button, set off the security alarm. What a lot of people don't know about these early systems is that they use a hexadecimal frequency code that aligns with the module. So, for example, the serial number on the back of this would align with the key fob. So the key fob would be set with a specific frequency from Kenwood. Then the dealer would um, match it up with the module, and then your keyless entry system would work. This would allow for multiple keyless entry fobs to work with the transmitter. This transmitter can only store one frequency code. So if you had two key fobs and say they had different frequency codes of a hexadecimal system uh, configuration, so let's say this one was 13 for uh, simplicity, and your other key fob was configured as 20, the module will only read one and whatever one that's programmed to. So if this module is programmed to this key fob at 13 as the frequency, once again for simplicity, it would only work with 13 and the one set to 20 would never trigger anything, never trigger an action anyways. So now we have a discontinuation of parts from Kenwood. You can no longer go to the dealership and get a key fob and have it programmed to your module. You can buy the module, you can buy the harness, and you can buy the key fob usually separately. So a lot of people would say, well, what are you going to do? Because the frequency of the module and the frequency of the key fob are going to be different when you order them separately or you get them from different sources. Well, I'm going to tell you exactly what you do. So you go through this, the basic installation process of the module if you don't already have it installed. Let's say that you're installing it for the first time, um, like I am here. When you go to install this, there is a specific harness, as you can see here, that ties into the door entry system, but also has two wires, a red and a yellow, that tie into the harness for the security module. And the reason for that is, is so that you can activate the panic and you can also set the security system. It, this, the module alerts the security system that has been unlocked with a valid um, action and then disables the security system and vice versa. The part that I want to focus on, though, is how do we pair this key fob that was acquired from eBay with that module that was acquired from eBay from a different seller? Because that's where people 
are having a hard time understanding is how do I match this with that when I bought them separately? So if we take a look at the module and I have the cover taken off specifically for this demonstration, you'll see this toggle switch right here, right in the corner. And that toggle switch is the learn function. So if you remember, I said they can only hold one frequency. Well, whatever that frequency was doesn't matter because we're gonna erase it. And how we erase it is, is you plug this all in and then you push it to learn, which I'm not going to do because it'll reset my frequency and I'll have to go through the programming process again. But you would, before you turn the car on, do anything, basically just open the door, set this to learn, set it down, turn your key in the ignition to ACC, basically so that everything is powered on, hit the buttons a couple times. They say one works, but I wanted to do it once and make sure it was done right and make sure that it received the frequency. So it's in a learn setting and you power on the car, you press this button a handful of times, like three, four times. Then turn the key off on the ignition, flip this back to S1, and then the key fob should work. It's as simple as that, really. Now where the complication comes into, into hand is when you have two key fobs that you want to program. Because if you remember, I said this one was 13 and my other one would be 20, for example. Well, the only way that you can get two key fobs to work is if you program the circuitry and that hexadecimal code to mirror each other. So the two key fobs have to function at the same frequency. Why is that difficult? because it's a flat mat circuitry on the back side of this, and I won't open this up, but just trust me, I'll post a picture here in just a bit of what the flat mat circuit board looks like. On the back of that, you punch a series of holes into the circuit board to match the frequency of the remotes, and you use a 1.5 millimeter punch to hole out the circuit boards, and that will, if you can find a commonality frequency code, you could punch out both key codes to operate the same frequency, and you could then pair them to your module, and then you would have two. For my purposes, I only want one, because um, there's no need for it. This is a collector car at this point, and the only reason why I want this is because it's, a really, a hand, it's really cumbersome to unlock the door all the time with the key, whereas you can have a keyless entry system. So I hope this video was helpful for you legend owners. I hope you learned something. Um, I'll try to put as much detail as I can so that you can understand what I'm talking about when it comes to the flat mat circuitry boards on the back of the key fobs. The learning process is fairly simple, not complex at all. So I hope this is helpful to you and I hope you enjoy your keyless entry system either on your NSX or Acura Legend, because this applies to both, and so Acura NSX owners can benefit from this video as well. See you on the next one.